good mo good evening Yes, good evening. How are you, Mr. Thomas? I'm fine now. Mm. Um, I hope everybody is okay. I can see Moza and uh, Pauline are trying to connect. So let's continue from where we stopped. Uh, yesterday we discussed about functions of management and uh, uh, we looked at uh, various functions of management according to different people uh, who try to define what is management in terms of functions. We saw the, the guy who called Henry for you. For him, he said that to manage is to forecast and plan, organize, command, and control. Uh, but we saw uh, somebody else who's called Ruth Agalik and he said that uh, management is about planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, and reporting, and also budgeting. But uh, we finally found that we shall uh, discuss these functions as per concern or donor, because these guys were able to summarize uh, so many functions of management into five. And those are planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Uh, those are the main uh, functions of uh, management that you are going to discuss within this class. Yesterday, we discussed about planning. We say, Planning is actually choking out the future or designing out the future, predicting the future, deciding in advance what to be done in future. We saw that the four main questions that we should actually ask ourselves when we are planning. We ask ourselves what to do. That is the activities which are likely to happen to a particular day, on a particular day or on a particular event. Then when to do the time, we set deadlines of activities. This activity must be done within this period of time. Then how to do, that is the method, the approach, the technique to be used, that is how to do question. And lastly, we ask ourselves where, where we want to be. That is, what is our goal? If we do these activities, if we do them in this particular period of time, if we use this particular method, where shall we reach? What will be our goal? What will be the outcome? So that is actually about planning. And we say that uh, planning is like a systematic thinking. When we talk about systematic thinking, that is trying to uh, uh, think about different uh, uh, activities that can be done by different people. And if you can able to um, plan those activities, to think about those activities and be able to use them to achieve your objectives. That is a system. It's not just one thing. It's a system of so many things, of so many activities. And um, we stopped from there. I think the next function today is organizing. When we talk about organizing, is the process of bringing together the three main resources, which are physical resources, financial resources, and human resources. How do you bring this together? You want to create a productive relationship among these resources for you to achieve your goals. Actually, we can say organizing 
it's a process of bringing together these, uh, these resources to a productive relationship, which will help us to achieve our main goals. So what do we mean by a productive relationship? We need, if we are, we, in the planning, we said we are going to uh, uh, identify activities that we, we shall do. Oh, that is, that deals with planning, which activities that may be done, when they should be done, and which method should be used. That is in planning. But when it comes to organizing, now we start, um, we, 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 we are actually looking for a way of creating a productive relationship, a relationship that is more productive. You want these activities to be uh, performed in a productive way, in a productive uh, uh, manner. So when we, we are bringing together, for example, you may find that if you are to, if you had, you had a particular activity that needs human resource, that needs physical resources, those are, fine, those are equipments and tools, that needs financial resources, that is capital or money. So for you to get these resources uh, used to effective uh, production, that is what we mean by organizing. You want to coordinate the activities. You are actually coordinating activities that are being done within the organization. That is organizing. So when we say, for example, let me give an example of, or maybe you have, um, today you have 20 checkouts in your hotel. At maybe tomorrow you are planning to have 20 checkouts in your hotel and you are having uh, three staff at the front office. 20 checkouts are so many in that when you are checking out a guest, you want to do it very fast and you want also client or a customer or a guest to go when he has fully settled his account. He has paid for everything. So this is a very crucial period of uh, at front office or a crucial activity at front office of checking out guests. So if you do a mistake, you may check out a guest and he or she leaves without paying. So, and imagine you have 20 checkouts within one hour. Maybe one is checking out at 8.30, another one 8.45, five of them are checking out at 8.50, others are checking out at 9 uh, a.m. So you find that you have so many checkouts in a, in a, at the same time. And you have two workers. You may say, because of these checkouts, what do I need? I need human resources. I need more staff. The three staff at the front office are not enough. Let me require assistance from another department, maybe housekeeping. You look for somebody from housekeeping to come and help you. You need somebody to carry luggages from uh, guest rooms to their uh, vehicles. That is also, uh, you need some people. You need equipment to be used. Those are physical resources. You need uh, equipment to be used maybe to carry their luggages, trolleys and, uh, and some other equipment that may be used to carry luggages. So, and you find that be because of the activities you have, you need people, that is human resource, you need equipment to be used, you need tools to be used. So you understand that it is very, there's, there are too many, too many activities, too many groups of people that are going to do those activities. So therefore, their needs, their coordination is required or organizing these activities is required. If you are able to coordinate or to organize these activities to a productive relationship, that is what we mean by organizing. If you are able to coordinate these activities, which are being done by different people, which are being done by uh, 
from different areas, but you coordinate them to a productive relationship. You give them a productive relationship for you to achieve your goals. That is organizing. So in other words, in, in hotels, you have got so many groups of people, so many uh, departments, so many sections, which have got different activities. And these activities should not, uh, uh, these groups should not work against one another. No, they should all work together. And for them to work together, there should be a productive relationship amongst them. How is this relationship going to be created? It is through management. It is by, it is the manager that is going to create this productive relationship. So if you are able to create this productive relationship, that is organizing. Having so many groups of people have got, which have got different activities, which have got different people, which have got different tools and equipments. And if you are able to coordinate them, to bring them together to serve common goals, that is organizing. So we can say that organizing has got uh, four main or five main activities which is identification of activities. And this mostly is done in the planning. You identify activities, that is planning. And the classification of grouping of, classification or grouping of activities. Now you, the activities you have, you start grouping them. You say, this particular activity is going to be done by this group. This particular group, uh, activities, this group of activities will be done by this group. That is assignment of duties. After grouping activities, put them in this, activities of the same category should be put in the same category. So that is grouping. Then uh, you assign duties. You say you, you are responsible for this. You, you are responsible for this. You, you are responsible for this. So you give responsibilities actually. Number four, Responsibility goes with authority. If you give responsibility to somebody, you should also give him or her authority. There is no responsibility without authority. So we, when you give, when you delegate somebody, when you give an assignment to a group of people, you should also give them authority to do, to do so. If they need something, they should not just at any time come to you to ask for permission. You no, know, you have given them a responsibility and authority. They should carry out responsibilities at even a minimum supervision. They don't need to inquire uh, how things should go or how things should be done at any time. You have given them responsibility plus authority. Then finally, you coordinate you, you, you coordinate and make sure these uh, activities are all serving common goals, are all towards uh, common goals. <clears throat> that is uh, organizing. So in, in short, we can say uh, that um, We can say that uh, uh, organizing is the process of bringing together physical resources, financial and human resources. And if you are able to bring these physical and human resources, uh, and be able to use them to a productive relationship that is organizing. So if you are able to coordinate activities, different activities, different groups of people, and you give them a productive relationship, when you talk about a productive relationship is that each group is serving towards the objectives and another group, the same thing. 
and another group the same thing. So according to Henry Foyo, he said that to organize a business is to provide it with everything useful. For example, raw materials, tools, capital, and personnel. If you want to effectively organize a group of people, give it necessary uh, uh, resources. Without resources, organizing a group is impossible. If you want to organize different activities of different groups of people, give them the necessary resources. If it is money, give them money. If it is equipment, give them enough equipment. The worker will be very easy. Now, and you said that uh, uh, organizing involves identification of activities, classification of activities, assignment of duties that is giving responsibilities, and then you also give authority after you coordinate all of those groups. Yeah. That is uh, now. If there is there any question before we continue with the is there any question? If there is no question, we can continue to staffing. Staffing is also another main function of management. And when we say staffing, it's a process of manning the organization structure and also keep it manned. When we, when we say manning, it is providing personnel, providing staff to a certain position. So fixing a, a right person at a right job position. That is what we mean by staffing. Staffing is putting a right person, a right employee at a right job position. That is staffing actually. If you have a right person at the right position, that is what you mean by staffing. Therefore, O'Donnell and Cons, they said that uh, staffing involves manning the organization structure through proper and effective selection, appraisal, and development of personnel to fill the laws designed by the structure. So before you start staffing your organization, you have to figure out your organizational structure. What does it mean by the organization structure? That is your hierarchy of authority. How is the structure of your organization? It has the general management. It has these departments. Under this department, there is a certain section. After, under this section, there are also these units. There are also these people. Now, if you are going to staff your organization, you will base from the structure of your organization. And if, for you to design the structure of your organization will actually depend for you to figure out the structure of your organization, it will depend on the size, the size of your organization. The size of your organization will matter a lot. So according uh, to Cons, he said that for you to start uh, staffing, you first have to get the organization structure. An organization structure will tell you where you need staff. And then if you have already uh, designed your organization structure, and you know very well that you need staff in these departments. 
you need staff at these positions. You will now look for those staff. This is where the selection of staff starts from. You start selecting your staff. After you have selected them, you have selected them, you may give them positions, you may give them job and they start uh, working. What about after a period of time? You may find that after six months, you have yes given a job to an individual, but you find that after six months, the guy or the employee may not still be fitting for the position because maybe the organization have grown in terms of clients, in terms of market share, etc. Maybe it needs somebody else who is more skillful. You should do appraisal. Appraisal means it is evaluation of staff performance. You, you, you evaluate staff performance. You should not say that ah, I recruited this staff and he, I'm sure that he or she is experienced and educated. No, you should keep on appraising to see whether the guy is still fitting in your organization. Then development. Development may be training. Development may be apprenticeship. So you should keep on developing your staff, knowledge, and skills. That's why we are saying that um, staffing involves money power planning. You estimate which staff do you have, do you need? Then you search for those staff. After you have got the, the staff, you put them in their positions. And when you have put them in, the, in their positions, that's what we mean by recruitment. When that is the recruitment process, actually. So that is manpower planning or the recruitment of staff. Then you, you train. Training and development, very important. Don't just say I've recruited an experienced person. No, no need of training. Keep training them. Keep training them and develop their knowledge and skills. Another thing which should be considered in staffing is remuneration. Remuneration is salary uh, or giving salary, appropriate salary to individuals. That is also a very important point in staffing. Salary is of great importance in staffing. Without salary, staff may not perform well. So pay on time, give them proper salaries. If, it is, uh, if somebody has acquired something that requires more salary, please add salary to that particular person. If you see that somebody is fitting for a particular, is, uh, is worth the, this amount of money provide this is what makes staff actually in most cases staff are happy because of their salaries if their salaries come on time if they are paid well staff will always be happy another thing is performance and appraisal you always check their performance through appraisal another one is promotion and transfer. Emphasize on promoting your staff. Give them promotions. Mm -hmm. Reward the best employee, if possible. Yeah, that is about staffing. Is there any question? Is there any question about staffing? Do you understand what, is sta what staffing means in management? Yeah, we get yes, it. Yes, yes. It is it is it is it is clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let's continue with the but for me I have a confusion. Mm, which confusion?
Yes, tell me which confusion do you have? Yes. Yes, tell me. And the mute and the speak. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a confusion. Mm -hmm. Which confusion? Planning and the organization. Organization. Planning and organizing. Where the difference is. Yes. So you want to know the difference between organizing and the planning. Yes. So um, in planning, we say that it is actually to forecast what will happen in the future. That is planning. You, 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 you decide what will happen in the future. You say, for example, if tomorrow we have 20 customers in our restaurant, we, 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 we just decide what, how they will sit. Uh, we, 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 we plan when they are going to come in the restaurant, what they will eat, uh, depending on their number, uh, how many equipments we need, how many tools we need, uh, how many tables do we need, those are example, tools. How many um, uh, folks, how many plates? So that is planning. So for example, tomorrow we are having a group of 20 people who are coming to, uh, to our restaurant for lunch. Right now, if we start planning for them, we shall ask ourselves what to do with this group of 20 people that is coming. That is the question, the first question you ask ourselves. What to, to do with this group of people? One, they want food. Which menu are they going to use? You write down the menu, for example. Mm. When are they going to come? Right. How many um, staff do I need to have in the restaurant? This. Uh, which equipment do I need? You list down, that is planning. Now you stay. You also come to the method of service. What, which method are we going to use to have these customers satisfied? We shall have a host and a hostess at the entrance to welcome them. Immediately as they arrive in our restaurant, they should find everything that is food ready everything in terms of food and drinks, they should find them ready. That is our objective. That is where we want to be. So that is in planning. Actually, planning is a paperwork. Is a paperwork or it is a draft work. You draft down on the paper. What, how things will go, how activities are going to be done, which activities are going to do, how are they going to be done? That is uh, planning. When it comes to organizing, you will also um, think about how you are going to coordinate these activities. We shall have a group of people in the bar who are going to be preparing or serving beverages or drinks to these uh, guests. We shall have a group of waiters who are going to be serving. You may say each table is going to have one waiter and each table will have maybe four people seated on each table. How, how, how are we going to make sure that these waiters in the restaurant coordinate, work together? How are we going to make sure that people in the kitchen, a group of of staff in the kitchen, they have got different activities because they are the ones who are going to prepare their food. We have other people in the bar. They are the ones preparing or serving their them beverages. We have waiters who are serving them food and beverages. So how 
are we going to coordinate their activities? That is where organizing come in. Now, you say, uh, you say that <clears throat> this, the people in the kitchen, you give them authority and maybe you give them maybe a leader. You say everything that I will, I'm going to, uh, uh, we are going to ask everything from you. Maybe you assign somebody something, some activities. You are in charge of the kitchen team. You are the one to be responsible for all foods from the kitchen. You go in the bar. You said some, tell somebody in the bar that you are responsible for this. A waiter, you are responsible for this. You also choose somebody who are responsible for ensuring that there are no plates. Uh, the, 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 the plates are available and the cutleries. Sometimes you may clean plates. You may have plates which are equal to the number of customers. But one client may use more than three plates. So you, you should have a, 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 a replacement. You should have other plates to replace those ones. So you may have those plans. You, how do you organize these various groups? How do you coordinate their activities? Yeah, that is where organizing comes in. You want to put everything in its right place. That is organizing. If, if, um, you are a, in the kitchen, you provide all resources necessary. If they need money to buy something, you give. If they need raw materials, you give. If you need, they need some equipment, you give. That is part of organizing. Because we said that organizing is also giving necessary resources to group of people. If you want to have effective organize, or, uh, if you have you want your group to be to perform well you should provide it with everything useful those are raw materials tools people it is that is organizing so actually you understand that planning it's like just predicting the future you are not yet in the action but organizing you are now starting to look for everything needed, every resource that is required for that particular event, for that particular service, for that particular activity to go well. Let me just summarize it that way. Nimbu given you may get confused too. Planning, it is just designing out or predicting the future. It's actually a paperwork designing how the event is going to go from the first second to the last second we are we are still on that example of our 20 customers who are going to come to our restaurant we are going to plan from the first second of operation from morning until the last client the last customer moves out uh, from the restaurant you plan how things are going to go then organizing you are going to provide all necessary resources. That is organizing. Depending on your plan, you find that you need some equipment in the kitchen. You provide. You find that you need more people in the restaurant. Maybe you may say, I need more casual workers, for example. You provide. You may say, I need some money to buy something new that will make my customer feel satisfied. You may get money and buy that particular uh, thing that you want to buy. So that is organizing. Actually, organizing is providing necessary resources to staff, either equipment, either more staff, either uh, financial resources, that is money, that is organizing. David, is it clear? Yes, I satisfied. Yeah, we can summarize it in that way. I hope also staffing is clear because staffing it is providing uh, staff. It is providing staff 
to the organization structure. It is actually manning the organization structure and keep it manned. Next is directing. Directing, it is part of managerial function which actuates uh, organizational method to work efficiently for achievement of organizational goals. That is directing. Directing, it's actually um, showing how organizational methods, showing individuals or staff the organizational methods. You show them how things are actually done. That is directing. You show them the methods of the organization. You, you show them the standards of the organization. You show them how things should be done. That is directing. Directing is like... Um, is like um, let people mute. Directing is involves uh, influencing, guiding, supervising, motivating all the subordinates uh, for the achievement of organizational goals. That is directing. Directing it's like actually influencing, guiding. When you say influencing, means um, influencing means means you 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 want to to make somebody desire for some things maybe somebody was not willing to do a particular activity he's not willing at all but if you can be able to make him desire to do something that is influencing so influencing like motivating are somehow similar but not 100% similar. Motivating, it is somebody who were able to do something and he is willing to do something or to do a certain job, but he doesn't have motivation. He doesn't have um, morale. So motivation, it's like giving morale to an individual. That is motivating. While influencing, somebody doesn't have any desire at all. So you, you want to make him willing. Somebody is not willing, but you want to make him willing to do the job. That is also under directing. Another thing is guiding. Guiding, that is actually leading. You go in front, other people follow you by showing examples, you may guide by showing examples. You may guide by showing people how things are done, uh, teaching them how things are or should be done. That is guiding. Then supervising means you lead yeah, by examples. That, uh, supervising is directing actually is actually you are leading uh, by involves example. supervision, motivating, leadership, and communication. Those are the four main elements of directing. So we said that uh, directing is, is actually showing the methods and the standards of the organization, how things go, how things should be done. Now, in the planning, organizing, and the staffing, we were not yet in the real activity. We have not yet started uh, putting, uh, we have not yet started activities. We were like, in the planning processes, maybe let me say, in through planning, organizing, and staffing, activities have not yet started. We were like planning uh, before. We were like in mere uh, pre, pre, primary preparations. We are only pre preparations. Now we we are doing. We are starting the work now. If we are about to start the job or the work. You, know, you need now to direct. This is when you need to give directions. You need to show people how things now are going to, do, to be done according to the plan. 
you direct according to the plan because in planning you are sure that through these plans we are able to achieve our objectives now directing we are going to direct people how to implement the plans you had how to put into action your plans you show them the methods how the things are done through supervision motivation leadership and the communication these are four main elements and important elements of directing without communication in directing things cannot go well leadership means there should be authority there should be somebody in charge of things the one who is going to be liable for each and every activity that is happening motivation you should keep your staff motivated supervision you look or at what they are doing at any time you know a supervisor is like he, he does things he, he he does his job together with his subordinates a supervisor does not sit in the office supervisor is always together with subordinates working with them showing examples that's why we are saying supervision is under directing is directing clear to everybody i hope it is if you have a question you unmute and ask and we are about to conclude in a few 15 minutes we will be ending this class but we, sh we, we must finish functions of management so directing means giving examples showing how things showing staff how things are done motivating them influencing them to do the job and also ensure proper communication among different groups of people for example, the reason why communication is important, assume in, at the front office, they receive a reservation from a, a particular client, but they don't communicate the housekeeping that we are receiving two guests in this evening at five, maybe in this tonight, we are receiving uh, two guests who are going to arrive at 2 a.m. Ninjoro Chane, Samanani Sujo. If you don't communicate to housekeeping, they may not prepare or make the room. So that's why there should be effective communication among different groups of the hotel. That is also under directing. Number five, which is actually the last one, the last function, but not the least, is controlling. When you say controlling, it implies measurement of accomplishment against the standards and also collection, correction of deviation, if any, to ensure achievement of organizational goals. That is controlling. So the purpose of controlling is to ensure that everything occurs in the conformities with the standards. Therefore, for you to control, you must have standards. You must set standards. You must establish standards. Standards, this means how things should be done. How things should be done. If a standard says in the restaurant that each, each order before anything is produced in the kitchen, there should be a docket. There should be a printed order means mbere yuko mu gikoni bategura order y'umukiriya bagomba kubona order e printed ivuye muri resto it means that is a standard no waiter no waitress that should come in the kitchen verbally and give his or her order that is a standard if the standard says so if you are going to go control under control process you are going to measure how the standard is being observed you are going to measure how whether the standard is being accomplished if you find that there is any deviation if you find that there is 
any deviation, if you find that there is any deviation, you take a corrective action. You take a corrective action. Actually, why do we go through this measurement? Why do we need to measure how standards are being accomplished? Is to check if there is any deviation and ensure that we are in line with the organizational goals. Otherwise, we may keep working, we may keep producing, and at the end, we find that we have deviated from the standards. We have not fulfilled what the standards says. What standards say, says. So we should always go through the process of controlling. In management, controlling is very important. Theo Hyman, he says that controlling is the process of checking whether or not proper progress is being made towards the objectives and the goals and acting if necessary to correct any deviation. That is according to Theo Heyman. He said that controlling is a process of checking whether or not we are in the progress towards the objective. And if you find that you are not in the line with the objective, you are not in the proper line, maybe you have deviated, you take a corrective action when it uh -huh. is still soon. So that you don't find yourself at the end of the process you have made so many mistakes and the products you have produced, they are not going to be sold. Or oh, the things you have, been, you have done, they are taking you into losses. So that is why controlling is very important. So these are the four uh, main elements of controlling. So controlling, according to Cons and Odonian, they say that controlling is the measurement and the correction of performance activities of subordinates in order to make sure that the enterprise objectives and primes desire to obtain them as uh, being accomplished, not as, but are. That is are. This is uh, not as. So controlling you measure, and if possible, take a corrective action for you to achieve your objectives. And make sure that you are, go you are doing as you planned. Uh, Mr. Cons and Odonian, brought in an element of following the plans. So when you plan, you say, we are going to do these things. We are going to, to, to pass this way for us to live somewhere. If you want to go to Kigali, you say, I must pass through Kayonza and go through Rwamagana until I go to uh, Kigali. So it can be unfortunate if you reach Jawega and then you, pass through Kajitumba, you are, have already deviated. It, you are not going as per the plan. If you plan that you are going to go through Jabega, through Kabarore, and go to Kayonza, all the way to Rwamagana, then you reach Kigali. If you decide to pass Kajitumba, that is not, you are doing as things have not been planned. You, but you may reach Jabega and you find that you must pass there, but that is when you change plans. If you decide to pass through Kajitumba, you have changed your plans. You first stop and ask yourself, is changing plans really necessary? Is it necessary that I should pass through Kajitumba really? If you find that it is necessary, you pass there. If you find that it is necessary, you may pass there. 
but if you find that it is not necessary, you may avoid passing through Javega. Uh, so that is um, also something that is very important. Now, we that is about controlling. The Mr. Conts and O'Donnell brought in an element of following plans, doing things as planned. They are telling us that you should go as per your plans. And in the controlling, we are checking whether we are still following plans. Therefore, controlling has got the following steps. There are four many steps of controlling. One, you establish standards. You set standards. That is the first step. The second step, you measure actual performance. Why do we say actual performance? Standards, these are like methods of activity, how things should go. But the second step, you should come and measure how what is happening at, at the ground is meeting the standards. That is measurement. You measure the actual uh, performance, how people are performing, how things are being done. You measure actual performance. When we say measuring actual performance means you are seeing, you are checking what is happening on the ground. If they were to prepare, uh, they were to set tables in the restaurant, that is the activity. But there is a standard associated with the table setup. There is a standard that you follow in your hotel, in your restaurant. You are going to say maybe there is a standard that each table, table knife should face or a teaspoon should face on the right side of the guest. If that is the standard, you are going to see, hey, Kobani Mugu setting a restaurant, are they following this standard? If you say that a napkin should be placed on top of a main, or a, 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 um, a, a main plate, a napkin should not just be put directly on the table, it should be put on top of a plate. Hey, you will go, go through the process of setup, you see whether staff are following the standard, are doing as per the plan. If the plan says it should be put on top of the, of, on top of the plate, that is in the restaurant, for example, you check whether it is being done. That is measurement. You measure and you compare. That is the, the third step. You compare now what is being done against the standards in comparison it means that you will see whether there is an, any deviation or you see whether they are in proper uh, accomplishment of your standards you check whether what is being done is uh, per the standards if you find them uh, meet matching well and good if you find any deviation, you take a corrective action. That is number four. So those are the main four steps of controlling. One, you establish standards. Secondly, you measure actual performance. You, you, you check whether what is happening is in line with the standards. Then you compare, you see whether there is any deviation. If you find that there is something wrong, you take a corrective action. A corrective action may be retraining, may be emphasizing on directing more. Directing, that is where you will show them the way. You will guide them. You may say, I'm going to emphasize more on training. The standards are not yet clear to every staff. Or you may say and find out that the mistakes which are being done are because of negligence. It is negligence that, that mistakes are being made. You may punish. 
you may give punishments to those guys or to those staff. That is controlling. Any question? Any question? Is it clear? Is it clear? Is controlling okay to everybody? Controlling is just measuring whether what is happening meets the standards of the organization. And if you see that there is something wrong, there is some deviations, you take a corrective action. That is uh, controlling. Any question? Any question? Is there any question? Is everything clear to everybody? If you don't have questions now, we are going to end it from here. And you start reading for the cut now. There will be a question about functions of management. At least you take two functions and be able to explain them, be able to discuss about them. If you are asked what is staffing, are you able to explain? If you are asked what is planning, are you able to explain? If you are asked controlling, are you able to explain? At least two functions are just enough. If better, you uh, get all functions, all main four of five functions, sorry. That is, that is, that is the end of our class today. Thank you very much, unless you have a question. If you have a question, you are free to unmute and ask before we call it a night. I hope there is no question. So uh, we have covered uh, what is necessary for the, this week. The remaining part will be covered uh, from Sunday and uh, next week. Then we finish this morning. Now, uh, Friday, let's not come Friday, but let's come Saturday evening. Let's start come Saturday evening so that if there is any question, we may discuss them together as we prepare for the cut. Friday, don't come, man. don't come. We have covered what was supposed to be covered. And I will share the link for these videos so that you may go visit on YouTube. Even the ones Twizejo I have shared the link on Mudo Harano, you want a link, Zoom class. You go through the link, you can review what we discussed. Leaving you to discussing it is going to be uploaded. You also get a link soon and be able to go through the explanations so that you may get them clear. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you.